Canton uh, has an adopted impact fee program. The uh, state of Georgia's impact fee laws does specify that uh, <coughs> the city has to prepare an annual update of the capital improvements element in the five year short term work program, which is part of Canton's comprehensive plan. That annual collected through the impact fee program. Uh, there is a police impact fee, a fire impact fee, a uh, parks open space recreation impact fee, and a roads impact fee. The annual update has a list of projects that have been proposed for all of those. The only new project that has been proposed was the tactical weapons of the police department. Question last time, what was the tactical, what was considered a tactical weapon? And uh, the chief uh, submitted uh, an additional uh, response providing the, uh, information for the mayor and council in regards to the tactical weapons. Yeah, I assume we have someone that's going to explain that. Yeah, I'll explain it. Okay. Uh,
Then there you go. Basically, the top weapon we're inquiring on is a, a rifle that has tactical capabilities such as attachments for slings, flashlights, and similar equipment as that. Not your tactical thing type rifles, but something that's light and that's efficient for the job that we do. Anyone have any comments, questions? Very well stated, thank you. meeting to order and if you will please stand while we pledge allegiance to the flag remain standing for the indication. decided not to do that or is this a postponement of going? We're simply removing it from the agenda. Which means we're not doing it tonight. Right. Okay. We're, as, at the last meeting I understood uh, uh, maybe someone was going to contact the uh, uh, someone to be here uh, from the uh, What's the method from ecological planning? Uh, yeah, we were. 
Oh, okay. And they couldn't. Oh, okay. I got you. We're not. I got you. <laughs> All members vote for the motion. Okay. Uh, Ten minute public input period. Uh, first uh, individual, Sandy McGrew. Mayor, Councilman. Downtown is looking really nice these days. I, I'm grateful that you've made the entrance to the city more attractive. I think it's My head is filled with so many things I wanted to say to you. While it's prudent to trim the budget of the city and eliminate positions that are unnecessary, the mayor is only a part-time public servant. Somebody has to be in the office to run the day-to-day -day business of phone calls and messages and funneling information back and forth so that the mayor can concentrate on the minutia and the rigors of running the city. And if this person is fielding those things at the mayor's office, it only makes sense that the mayor be the supervisory person. The city charter allows for this, and changing the charter at this time, after all of the man hours were is for the council to consider a raise for themselves and any increases to the pensions. A council member volunteers, nay, not volunteers, begs for the position through your campaign and you're begging to be this public servant. So as you have begged to be this public servant, and with Canton to take more money for themselves just sends a very negative message to the citizens. I do acknowledge, gentlemen, you are grossly underpaid. I know that you're here 50 hours a week, and I understand this. But leaders must set examples. It's up to you to show the citizens that time's tough, and we're going to take the hit just like you are. And it's only a part-time position after all. I came in this afternoon to see the council chambers to understand what improvements you're asking to be made. You have chairs and you have But again, while the city is in such debt, this is not the time to make improvements and especially not the time to hire an architect when the budget is so stretched. I think you can make do with this current room for a couple of more years until Canton City budget is healthier. I believe that the rental car tax is a sound way to gain more revenue for the city. We as citizens and you as leaders I recently heard that, that $51,000, and I asked people, did they need $5,100? And they said no, $51,000 are to be given to the Canton Theater for a projector. That's really generous, but I don't know that we can afford to spend that money on the theater. Doesn't the city already cover a huge debt for the theater? No salary increases for city workers. Okay, times are tough. Sacrifices must be made. But wait, did y'all really spend $30,000 on Christmas decorations? 
at a time when the city has an enormous debt from the reservoir fiasco, $30,000 on Christmas decorations. I am profoundly disappointed in our elected council's ability to make smart, sound fiscal, decision, fiscal decisions in the use of tax revenue for the citizens of Canton, Georgia. In hard times, positions might sometimes have to be eliminated for budget reasons. That's unfortunate. I repeat, if you at this time are cutting positions and spending money on frills, this sends a really bad negative message to the community. Thank you. Angel Wiggins. Good evening, Mayor and Councilman. <coughs> As most of you know, I'm Angie Wiggins from Enterprise Rental Car. I'm the area manager over our local Canton branch. I'm also a native. Um, but as you know, we're adamantly against the proposed 3% excise tax. Um, while we fully support Canton and the growth of downtown businesses, we also feel that it's completely unfair that we are the only business being affected by this tax. Enterprise Rent a Car will be putting a bill of $50,000 that helps the entire Canton community. Um, there was an article this morning that ran in the Cherokee Tribune regarding surrounding communities imposing the rental excise tax. Out of all the cities in Georgia, only 19 cities right now currently charge this tax. And of the ones that were mentioned in the articles, each city has multiple rental car companies. Um, Woodstock has three national rental car companies. Alpharetta has four national rental car companies, most of them with multiple locations. Um, Kennesaw has four, Johns Creek five, Atlanta eight with a lot of locations. Um, and Milton 5. In Canton, there's one national rental car company, one location, which is us, Enterprise Rental Car. Um, there's two other miscommunicate or misconceptions that I would like to address. One's that we're a national company, we can afford it. Yes, we are a national company, but each of our offices does operate individually. We hire local residents, and we pay our managers based off of our profit. Um, with the internet, Rental cars have become somewhat of a commodity, driving the rates down, and as everybody knows, car prices are going up, which continues to make it hard to be profitable in our industry. Um, and the addition of the $50,000 tax would obviously add an additional strain. Um, and while some of this tax will be passed along to our customers, we will also have to absorb the tax, which would affect our management teams and our local operations. Um, the, us, the other misconception is that the tax is for out-of-towners out of that are renting cars. Most of our customers, though, are local Canton residents. Um, customers traveling for vacations, customers with their car in the shop for service work, customers with their shop, car in the shop due to an accident, weekend travelers. So a lot of customers come to us traveling for the weekend who don't have transportation, as well as local businesses who travel for corporate use. Um, this is definitely a tax on local citizens and local businesses. Um, in closing, I think this tax is a very unfair burden to put on one company. Um, as a local citizen, as well as part of the business community, I definitely want to see a downtown that's prosperous, and we'll, we do what we can to support. That's why we made the decision a few months ago to relocate still in Canton. Um, However, I, again, I don't feel that this proposed tax is the right way to go about creating it. Um, I strongly urge you to vote against this tax tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Megan Griffin. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Megan Griffin. Most of you I have met previously. I'm um, here tonight. I work for the Cherokee County Historical Society, and I would like to say first and foremost that I love the city of Canton. I am out there every Friday, first Friday, working with Ginger Gerard um, for the past year. I also volunteer at different events that she hosts, or you all host, I should say. And I would like to say that Ginger is the hardest working woman in downtown Canton. She tries so hard. And comes up. <laughs> I would like to suggest to the Kansas City Council to please act with decorum.
forum and stop at the name call and personal attacks against citizens and employees and other people of this community. It, as I, as Standing the Bruce stated, I feel that leaders are supposed to lead and to act with decorum, and this political and social backbiting has to stop. And I would please request that the council cease and desist with all of this. Well, 
but you know, I, I've made no bones about how I feel about the uh, rental car uh, tax because I feel like the General Assembly, in their wisdom, if that exists, sometimes I wonder. Mm -hmm. But uh, in their wisdom, they gave the cities and counties the uh, opportunity to to utilize this as a means of funding. And so, and so many, so many cities have taken advantage of it. Uh, I guess we should, before we discuss this whole thing, we'll have to get a motion, if there is a motion. I'd like to make a motion. Um, you asked for a motion, here's, here's the motion. Um, it is hereby stated that the Canton, Georgia City Council affirmed the great American principle of limited government intrusion and unnecessary taxation into the lives and businesses of our citizens. And in support of this principle, the city of Canton rejects the proposed rental car tax. Second. Yeah, motion is second. All right, any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes. Several things about the rental car tax. First of all, it is a pass-through tax. It's not paid by the car rental company. Secondly, it does not affect the base car rental price. The base car rental price is determined by a multitude of factors, one of which is competition. For example, in Woodstock, which has this tax, I can rent a minivan for four days from Enterprise at $90 cheaper than I can rent it in Canton. So having a sole supplier is a benefit to that particular business. We have all agreed. Excellent way to obtain <laughs> funds. Anyone else? Well, you know, uh, I think that there's no question in my mind that this is certainly preferable to raising taxes in other areas that anytime we can go and, and utilize a user fee, everyone doesn't pay. If you don't use it, you don't pay. Okay? And now, our DDA uh, board members, which are Rebecca Johnston, Stan Rogers, Doug Key, Wanda Roach, Lewis Klein, Cleveland Chambers, and Zach Kell. The board on which these individuals serve has, supports this rental car tax. Our Canton Tourism Board, Francis Vaughn, George Murphy, Joyce Swindell, Bill McGruder, and Pat Gold, the board on which these individuals serve supports this rental car tax. On the Main Street Board members, Bill Grant, Ferris Schoen, Pat Gold, Wanda Rhodes, Stephanie Joyner, Nell McGruder, T.J. Cochran, Andy Bonner, Judy Bishop, Michael Buckner, Chuck Ware, and Jeff Brown. The board on which these individuals serve supports this rental car tax. There are three uh, entities that rent cars in, in the city of Canton. It's not, not just the one. Um, even uh, as, as everyone has heard by now, most of Billy Peppers is, is leading the city of Woodstock. He's the economic development director. Uh, in short, I will quote Billy Peppers there. We've had so much heard from Billy Peppers here, or at least about him from members here. In short, the excise tax is the fairest of all taxes because it is used a user fee based and is charged to the user and not the business. Gentlemen, I think it would be, you know, really uh, sort of a slap in the face to these entities that function directly for the improvement of our, our business and the viability of downtown to reject this. I think it would. I mean, I think that's, that's just telling them, no, we don't want to do something that's good for our community. Uh, anyway, that's all I have to say about that. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Roll call vote, please. Okay, uh, roll call. Mr. Goodman. No, the motion is to reject. You, you, you vote in favor of the motion? You voting in favor of the motion? I'm voting in favor of this motion. Okay, 
Do I need to restate yes. it for the record? Go ahead and restate it. It is hereby stated that the Canton, Georgia City Council affirms the great American principle of limited government intrusion and unnecessary taxation into the lives and businesses of our citizens. In support of this principle, the city of Canton rejects the proposed rental car tax. Okay, Mr. Hendrick. That will be a yes. Okay. Mr. Upton? Yes. Mr. Rush? Yes. Mr. Beresford? Yes. Mr. Bryan? Yes. Mr. Cummings? No. Okay, motion passed. Motion carries. All members voted for the motion with exception of Mr. Cummings. Okay. Next item. Action on ceiling repair bids. Mr. Patton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council Member. You all ought to recall at the work session meeting, this was discussed, presented. Our office does recommend the Mayor and Council consider rejecting all of these bids and going through a new bid process. There were flaws with the bid itself in regards to compliance with the state law, and none of the bids did comply with all the requirements of items that were to be submitted with the bid package. Okay. Do we have a motion to withdraw? I'm just having a discussion on that. We'll entertain a motion. We talked about it at the last meeting. Motion to reject all bids. Motion to reject all bids? Yes. Motion to reject all bids. A motion and a second. Any other discussion about that? Okay. If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. All members voted no. Thank you. Discussion of possible action regarding hiring an architect for council chambers renovation. Councilman Beresford. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In your package, you did find a document that states that here is a process that architect Mark Robillard would go through in preparing, overseeing, and supervising the renovation that we'd be doing in the assembly room. I guess that's what we could call it. And I would ask that we would, or I'd make a motion that we accept his offer. And that's the motion. Okay. I have a motion that we approve the hiring of an architect for putting together this proposal and specifications and so forth for the council chambers. Second. I have a second. Any other discussion? Mr. Cummings. Yes, just one question of Mr. Patton. Having that he had done all this work and put it out to bid, is he content with Robillard being the architect on this and consulted and in concurrence with it? Ultimately, that's a decision for the mayor and council to make in regards to Mr. Robillard. The mayor and council, there have been issues with services Mr. Robillard has done in regards to the renovation here at City Hall. The mayor and council did have issues with Mr. Robillard with the services that he has done with the proposed reservoir building. But that is a decision for the council to make. Mr. Mayor. I believe Mr. Rush had a question. Mr. Patton. The other question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patton. Council, Mr. Rush. Mr. Architect, do you feel we should go out for bids for a project manager and architect? Well, this is a professional services contract. And as such, it's expected that it would not be in excess of $100,000. We 
would not have to be fed out. Uh, you know, Mr. Robillard, uh, and I would hope that the mayor council uh, would work with Mr. Robillard as well as the staff in regard to the preparation of the documents uh, that are prepared and uh, that sort of thing. Uh, the city attorney uh, did express uh, to uh, the council the work session that uh, all of the bid documents, drawings, and everything come before the mayor and council for their approval prior to going out to bid so that the mayor and council is aware of uh, all of the specifications and details uh, before it goes to bid. The other question I would have is we had good experience with the use of a project manager for the repair of the roof. Uh, are you comfortable or do you feel that having a project manager for the repair of the big room, as we like to call it, uh, would be better than having us supervise the repairs? My opinion, yes, sir, because uh, I'm doing so many things uh, on behalf of uh, the city. Uh, the building official also uh, has quite a few responsibilities uh, in regards to uh, being the building official, doing commercial inspections, things of that nature. It would be a benefit to have a uh, third party project management that would oversee this whole process, perform inspections as we had done with the City Hall uh, roof project. Is there no design work involved? The project manager by generally, unless an architect wouldn't be able to do any design work. Uh, there probably is going to be some design uh, involved in the audio visual system specs uh, for uh, the lights, uh, things of that nature. There's going to have to be some uh, drawings that are going to have to be prepared uh, uh, in regards to uh, the structural elements uh, for the ceiling itself. I think the last project manager deal, which, which worked out very successfully indeed, but had to do with the roof. But I, I, I'm concerned that the uh, renovation of that uh, uh, sanctuary there, council chambers, is uh, maybe uh, involved many more aspects that uh, a single project manager might not be able to uh, to deal with adequately. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, just to clarify the uh, statement that was made about the uh, Taj Mahal reservoir, he followed through on the specs that was given him to draw up that plan. Therefore, he did not do anything that was out of order. So I would like to have that noted. He did what was asked of him. And I think once again, uh, our staff and I appreciate everything our staff does, but we need a specialist, and that's what we're looking for, to draw up the specs. And uh, that is the motion that I brought forward this evening, that we would have somebody, so we will not have change orders or anything else of the fall. Did, did we have a second on that one? Who did? Who did? Yeah, no questions. I would, I would tend to agree with Mr. Bearsport on that, that particular issue there, that I, I really believe that's something probably an architect ought to be involved in, and, uh, and they would follow it through from beginning design and make sure that it is, that it is uh, completed in accordance with the plans and specs that are... Uh, I'd just like to point out one other thing. Yes. In this proposal, the dais is to be part of this project, the little... Right conversation stand over there is going to be part of the project right. so everything is as far as we can see for C right at the moment is going to be covered so uh, I'm anxious to get it moving and get this done so that we can uh, move ahead right yes sir mr. mayor I, I, I'd like to just clarify one possible misconception and, and um, the uh, again miss Ms. Cindy that spoke first, I, I think he made some great points, but, but some things need to be clarified. This project is necessary primarily because there are serious roof issues in that room. There's um, possible asbestos in that roof. There, the roof leaks. The ceiling are, is, is, are, or has leaked. I think it would repair the roof issue, but now the ceiling's actually 
falling down. There's, there's every day they go in there and pick up pieces of that ceiling. We hold city court there on a, what, a weekly basis. So we, we have to use that room anyway. We, we inherited the room. Uh, those are, that's gonna be the bulk, the lion's share of the expenditures are, are, are repairs that are absolutely necessary and mandatory for the city of Canton to conduct its business. As far as the new digs for the council down there, I'd be fine staying up here as, as well. You know, it's kind of, I kind of like it. If I say something stupid, I can hide behind Big John right here. Uh, we got three toilets there that we can turn around and look at real close. You know, it's kind of a nice, cozy little feeling up here. So I wouldn't mind if we stayed. But the point I'm making is the new dais, is that how you say it? Dais? 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 stage area, it, it, it's a relatively minor portion of the overall expense that is necessary. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, we have a motion on the floor. Uh, for you to approve. What's that? For, for approval for the uh, hiring of the architect, uh, uh, Mark Robillard. Uh, okay, let's just, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voted for the motion. D, it's a discussion across the electoral council council's pension plan, salary increases, and term limits. Council Rush. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let's let's deal with the with the term limits first. Uh, I think that the, if I'm correct, Mr. Dyer, all we need is a resolution from council uh, to request that the legislature uh, approve term limits for elected officials right yeah it's we don't need a, a, a motion or any just a resolution right or, well, a motion motion to approve for a okay sorry i'd like to make a motion uh or a resolution that we request the state legislature to consider <coughs> or to approve two term limits for canton elected officials two consecutive term limits for canton official what that means is uh anyone here could run for council for two successive terms and then take four years off and run again or two years for council and if they wanted to run for mayor it would be two years for mayor then they could run for council again but uh, two successive four-year terms that's with the motion are you saying that you could run right after you or council you could run for mayor sure that doesn't count as no. no it's, it's and mayor could run for council. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 Is that, that's in the form of motion you have there? Uh, yes. Just solely on the term limits. Mr. Mayor. Yes. That means you're going to try for a power grab. Problem. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> where the power is anyway. <laughs> We have a motion and a second. Uh, I, I want to. I want to make sure. Oh, well, it was. It has now. Okay, Mr. Scott, you have. I have a question, and it's basically: uh, is that two successive terms starting now? Uh, for example, not to me, it's a point, but Mr. Goodwin is in his second term. Does that mean in that resolution he would be ineligible to run, or? Does that mean two terms starting now, this being the first term of those two terms? Uh, ...in the details, as they say, and when the legislation is actually prepared, that's when, but that's a detail we wouldn't want to let the legislature... Wouldn't we, want to, wouldn't we want to see what the legislation said before we... We can, through. well, we can, and we can propose, I mean, we can draft the actual language we would like them to amend, to use them in our charter. They'll play with it and tinker with it if they think otherwise, but we can suggest Well, I would, I would ask council, because, I mean, this isn't something I'm doing for my own personal edification. I just, what does council feel? Should we limit it to, to two terms, you know, retroactively or two terms going forward? My assumption had been that it would be 
uh, retroactive would, would apply to all current elected officials and, and that's what I base my support on is that um, you know the I don't, it I don't would be retroactive and, and I, I think we can ask for anything we want to ask for it from the legislature and, and I think it'll I think it'll give a clear indicator of who sitting up here really believes in this or who just wants to give a lip service. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, I'd go along with one term. Just one point. It, there seems to be some concern as to the uh, legality of trying to make it retroactive. So I think we have to, to find out that answer if we can before we do it. Let's, can I make a suggestion? Sure. That, why don't we, if you, if you vote in favor of it tonight, then I'll take that as instruction to prepare something. Okay. Look into it. And then maybe the December meeting, you can vote on the actual language. That I think the local legislators are group are meeting, meeting soon to adopt their rules. But in the past, you've had to have down to them by a certain date in January. If I'm not mistaken, I think the local legislators are going to have their annual meetings with the local municipalities in December. I heard that the other day. Yes. So maybe that would be a question they could ask sometime anyway. But but yeah, I think we let's just vote on it for two terms and, and see where we go. Uh, okay. Well, what's good now? Uh, I think that uh, you know here, here's the situation. I think that if uh, if if it, I don't think it could be retroactive because that simply wouldn't make sense that you could you could you could make something retroactive to an individual in office. I just don't believe you could do that. Uh, and it also would be uh, and the reason I say that too. Otherwise, you could have a group that maybe just wanted to get rid of the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> support of term limits which will work out if you make it if it's not retroactive if Jack wants to run next time he can run for two more two more terms but then it's over with okay and so that really begins to work in your term limits so if you're really for term limits you know whether it's retroactive or not you'd almost have to support it I think okay we have a motion in a second I'm still not sure what the motion says <laughs> is it retroactive or is it not? Can, no, no. can we put it retroactive in the... Uh, I hadn't thought about it too much, really, but... Uh, Let's just make a suggestion that you folks decide what your preference is, and then Bobby can determine what you can achieve relative to that preference. If you prefer retroactivity, he can inquire of the Legislative Council and General Assembly if that's legally allowable. If it's not, then you would have to go with the non-retroactivity. Can we do that? Well, I think I think if, if I may, Mr. Mayor, I think we what we have to do is, in order for this to go through the legislature, it has to be 100% approved by the council. There can't be any dissenters. I think if we say retroactive, we're going to have dissension. Uh, so I would just say two. Am I correct? You definitely don't have to say exactly. Exactly. And so I think let's just go for two terms. Uh, and see, we'll see how that works out. Because I, I, I really believe if we try and make it retroactive, it sounds vindictive. Any other comment? Those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All in favor of the motion. All right. Uh, the, you still got a couple yeah, items there? Yeah, the, uh, the other is the uh, increases of salary and the freezing of the pension plan. Uh, my suggestion earlier was that uh, at the uh, end of the, well, it, we, can, we can do this now, but it wouldn't take effect until the next election period. And that would be to increase the council salary to $8,000 and the mayor's salary to $10,000 and freezing all pension benefits. Uh, and I, and here's, here's one we're not too sure of whether we can but all, what I'm saying is newly elected officials uh, would get the higher salary and no pension. And uh, if we can do this, current, uh, current
council people and, and the mayor who are not eligible for election next year, they have the option of either freezing their pension and taking a higher salary or keeping the lower salary and continuing to recruit the pension until their term ends. Then at the end of their term, they, they were, the salary would go up and the pension would disappear. I think if we can do that, I don't know if we, we can do that. I'll sort that out a little bit. Huh? Well, all, all I'm saying is that for, um, at, at the end of your current term, your pension freezes. Sure. And then if you're reelected, uh, when your pension is frozen, your salary goes up. If you elect not to freeze your pension, say next January, January 2015, I guess, uh, 14, uh, if you elect, uh, you can freeze your pension and take the higher salary. If you're accruing pension, say in, in, in your case or Jack's case where you're accruing pension six, eight years, whatever it is, you can stop the accrual and take the higher salary and, and then that would be end of it, end of the pension. Or you can keep the lower salary and continue to accrue the pension for the following two years when your term is up. Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to split the two. That would simplify it. Uh, we could handle the pension issue immediately. And I think Mr. Dyer took on his, uh, as a task to determine the salary portion of it, how that would be handled in terms of whether three got it or whether it had to be equal or whatever it is. So since we're so nebulous and we don't have an idea of how that would be handled, but we do know what we want to do with the pensions. Why don't we just go ahead and do the pension portion? And then when Mr. Dyer has the answers, come back and a motion could be made how to handle the increase in salaries. And if the council wants to do that at that time, they can do so. That would be my suggestion. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm ready to answer now. I think oh, I'll okay. Then we'll yeah, the, the salary increase limitation the law is it can't take effect until after the next election, but it takes effect for everybody starting the January after the next election. So it's equal. So it's equal for everybody starting in January after the next election. Pension is not included in the definition of compensation. So pension can be dealt with any time, no limitations dealing with elections. Yeah, no, I don't deal with them separately. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Marison, um, I think the, the pension is, as far as the council is pretty close to uh, being something of history. So I, I think the people in the audience ought to know that uh, we, we have to do something to entice people to want to be here. And so uh, you either got to give them some type of carrot with the pension or some type of carrot with uh, a minimal sal salary. And, uh, Otherwise, <coughs> you know, we can have an election, we won't have anybody to run it. So uh, I agree, with Mr. Cummings, that uh, we can eliminate the, the area concerning the pension. I think our committee that I'll report on in a minute is in perfect agreement with that to eliminate it. We can do that part right now. Then maybe I'll, I'll modify my motion and make a motion to to increase the salaries at the next election year of council to, for council to eight thousand and for mayor to ten thousand. And and then I'll make a second motion to eliminate the pensions. Mr. Mayor, yes. It's a hot subject. It is. Just speak for myself. When I ran, I didn't realize we did get this compensation. I really use the word compensation and salary. Salary carries a different connotation, but compensation. But also, some months, a year or so back, we looked at the uh, cities in and around Canton and seeing what their compensation is. And I don't know what it is now. And if we're handling this hot potato, I'm saying if we are throwing out a number without knowing what the <coughs> other cities within this area are compensating their council members and mayor, we should make it right 
the far as the pension, I'm fine. Separate the two, the pension can go. But also at the same time, it should be noted for the citizens that the pension is a big money maker for council. entire council because it goes on and on and on. So there will be a major savings if we do this. And I don't want the citizens to be thinking, oh, wow, here they go and make themselves well off, whatever. That is wrong. That is wrong. We were, uh, we, we have been told that if, if they freeze the pensions right now, it would save uh, on our annual uh, pension bill for all employees about sixty to sixty-five thousand dollars, which is a tremendous amount. And I, you know, I fully support eliminating the, the pension plan for elected officials. But I, I do have still have some difficulty with the salary increases. I know we're we paid not, I mean, not paid very much. I can assure you, you sacrifice and expend out of your own pocket much more than you're, you're probably making or getting in, in your uh, small salary for the year. But, you know, we've gone through some very, very tough times, as everyone has. A lot of people are not getting raises. A lot of people are just glad to have their jobs. And we're just, you know, I, ju I just find it, uh, I find it difficult to think in terms of raising your own salary during these economic times. Uh, we. I see the economy beginning to move a little bit, I hope, and you know, in some of the business that I deal with, I, I, it almost seems like things are, are, are beginning to turn around. Now, who knows what they're going to do? I have no idea. But I think there will be a future day down there when we do need to look at the salaries for those, and it probably be on my time. But uh, I do think that uh, it needs to be done at some point, but I, I think now it's probably just, just my opinion, not a really good time. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. You, you argued two points, sir. At one time. Yes, sir. <laughs> the, the pension plan is costing the city. It's costing our tax rate. <laughs> so either we do away with that as an incentive for council or have compensation. I think it's something that we can switch now that's what we should be looking at we're going to switch it from one to the other because you said in a yearly basis but there are numerous occasions uh, that the pension plan is generating a lot of dollars yeah. so uh, if we want to have I'll say good counsel uh, we need to have incentive for people to be interested in and, and by no means is a compensation package here an uh, incentive to have somebody it's because people wanted to serve and put up with the issues and the interest and everything else that's going on to try to manage the city but uh, i'm not swapping one for the other i've been at this thing now for three years and it's a lot more than i anticipated and uh, I'm just saying, let's make it right for this council and future council members when we do something, because it has been a long time. Mr. Mayor, okay. I, I, I still would like to link, link the two together. I think that I agree with Mr. Beresford that this is, uh, this is a total package. And, and when, when I ran for council, I had no idea we got a pension. Uh, and, and the silliness of the pension is that after four years, I could make more money on the pension than I did when I had salary here, or comp, you know, compensation. compensation. And as far as what Mr. Cummins said, uh, in looking through the compensation for other areas around here, uh, right now they're minimally five times what we get. Uh, and I don't know if they get a pension or not, but from what I'm talking at GMA, most of the elected officials in the municipalities get a pension, which for part-time people, I don't think that's such a great idea. Mr. Scott, yeah, I talked to a former council member from Holly Springs just today, and he said he used to get $500 a month, plus they had a pension. Now, I don't know what the rate of the pension was, so 
I mean, we could, you know, you can link them together, you can separate them, uh, but I think we want to get rid of the pension is what we've been talked about. Okay. Mr. Ryan? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, I think we need to, again, make it clear that the raises we're proposing would not be raises for ourselves. If, if I understand it correctly, and if I'm misunderstanding it, I think we need to change it but to raise this further out in the future, such that not one single elected official sitting here benefits one dollar from the raises that we vote in, that the raises would become affected, effective after the next election for, for every office here, so, so that it could never be said that we, I would never support any proposal to give myself a, a raise. Well, I think I, I, I think I think that Mr. Dyer indicated that the salary increases would have to, or the salary compensation for the council would all have to to go up at the same time. Am I correct? And what did that what you so The ones who aren't up for election yeah. in 2013 will get the raise. Increase yeah. January right. So it would affect this council. Could we not just make the change effective two years after that? So we would assure that nobody here would be voting themselves a raise. Yeah, but I mean you're talking about binding successive councils at that point. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're yeah. doing anyway. That's what we'd be doing anyway, binding some successive councils, because three of us would maybe not be here to enjoy so the first. What I'm saying is you, right. if you vote now for an increase to not take effect of January 2016, 16, which 16. would be, all of you would have run for re-election by, right. by 2015, right? right. Why, couldn't so, you, why couldn't you just decline to accept it? If it's a, if it's a ethical issue or moral issue, you just don't accept it. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Yes, go ahead. Before we make any decision on this, I would like to see a study. Pay scales of the local officials. I had it somewhere, but I didn't bring it. If, if I could just, if, if gonna have, even on the pension plan issue, there's going to be a subsequent vote because there'll be an amendment to the plan prepared by GMA. So, it will be a separate issue. It's going to come back for another vote. Yes. I, I just, we continue to want to survey people around us, and I've asked for that as well. But there's a time point. Let's do what we want to do. Don't worry so much about somebody next door. To it. I can now, just a minute, anyway. Just a minute when I talk about something else, I'll change my tune. <laughs> I, I can assure you that the numbers proposed for the city of Canton elected officials is significantly below anybody else in the area. I, I've, that's all. And Mayor, did uh, Mr. Rush have a second on that motion, or was it just? Was it just I believe. I believe John seconded that. Yeah. So there is a motion on the floor. And we have a motion for it. Only the only other thing I would say is that what it gives the appearance is that we, we're, we're trying to save the folks some uh, citizens' money uh, by doing away with the uh, pension plan. We get we then turn around looking for a place to spend that money. And you know I'm just I'm just not comfortable in personally losing that. What's that? I've got a place for the spending. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure we got a lot of places we can spend it. We, we, there's a lot of times we need to be looking at trying to save money and not putting it somewhere else, you know, and, and, and saving the taxpayer some money, you know. Otherwise, you're just taking from here, it looks good here, so we're right. Anyway, Mr. Scott. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to ask Mr. Rush to withdraw his motion and then possibly make a motion after that if he does withdraw it to we address the pension. I'm not going to withdraw. We need to find okay, we have a, I'd like to make the point. We've been told by our finance people we're going to be saving about, what was it, $65,000 a year 
by eliminating the pensions? Is that right? And, and 60 or 60. And, and just doing, doing some quick math in my head here, I think I'm right. The raises that are being proposed would cost about $42,000 a year. $7,000 raise for the mayor. And uh, no, no, no. Raise. Oh, a seven thousand dollar raise for the mayor, and a um, uh, six thousand dollar raise, six times six, councilman, thirty six, seven for the mayor, forty three thousand. As a, so, so we'd, we'd be, you know, net about twenty thousand dollars, and uh, again. You know, folks out in the audience are laughing and snickering and carrying on like this is the Jerry Springer show, and I don't appreciate that. But there we go. But, you know, we're up here sacrificing our time, doing the best we can to serve our citizens. And again, I think the point needs to be made. There's no young people here. There's nobody here in their 20s. There's nobody here in their 30s. There's nobody here in their 40s. And there's only one guy here barely in his 50s. The rest of us are in our 60s and our 70s. One of the reasons young people have no interest in doing this is they don't have the time to take away from their money-making pursuits. <coughs> I do believe that there are some younger people out there that would consider running for this job if it was at least a, a close to fair compensation for their time. And, and I have done the the research myself. In fact, I've provided Mr. Rush the numbers, and and I also can assure you that eight thousand dollars for a councilman and ten thousand dollars for a mayor is still on the low side of comparable size cities. And no, and uh, again, no pension. Okay, Mr. Uh, I just like to say that it's been an honor to serve the you know, five years here on the council, all of you and um, work with all these people and the different set of council people as well. Uh, but I will also tell you, uh, they're very correct about salary. Uh, I was at GMA this year sitting with the complete group of strangers and uh, sat with a guy who uh, was very, he was about 30 years old and uh, he's a new councilman. I said, hey, I like count, being a councilman. He said, love it. He said that, I said, how big's your town? He said, 2,000 people, but 1,600 of them are inmates. <laughs> so he was representing 400 people. And I said, what's your salary there? $4,500. I said, well, do you get any uh, any kind of compensation uh, other than that? Well, yeah, we get retirement, we get travel, we get everything else. So for 400 people, he's getting $4,500 a year, plus the same benefits. So we indeed are on the low end of this. Now, I'm not pushing for a raise. I'm just telling you that this is a councilman that's 30 years old that came on board. Yes, the motion. Sure. Mr. Rice, go ahead. You read it, I want to read it, Susan. <laughs> That was I rejected that. It, it was all tied together to, to raise the salaries at the beginning of the next election year to eight thousand for council, ten thousand for mayor, and at the end of the current terms to cease the pension uh, approval for all council, all members of council. Excuse me, the increase in the next election year. Well, that's what I meant. Going to January twenty fourteen. Yeah, Jan January 2014. And the motion should also say that the ceasing of the pensions, as I understand it, <coughs> will it begin at the end of each of our respective terms. I believe that's what I said. I don't think she has that in there. Okay. Yeah, we have a motion and a second there. Uh, and I think everyone understands we're talking about both items together. Rejection, the ending of the uh, uh, pension plan, and the uh, increase in salary. Well, I ain't going for two things. Do I just do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Okay. Motion carries. All right. Was that? Uh, that was all on yours, right? All right. Okay. Item G, action on GMA retirement benefit cost study. Mr. Huffman? Yes. Um, for some that might be in the audience because of some of the conversations we've had, uh, there is a committee which uh, Mr. Cummings and I are, are on the committee and us along with um, our HR director as well as our mayor sits with us and, and Mr. Wood, uh, city manager. And our goal is to try to uh, develop a, a retirement plan that's, that's good for our employees at the same time that uh, will save us some money and bring our, our retirement plan more in line with uh, some of the trends that are going on in the insurance and retirement business today. And I just gave you, we had, uh, we've had about four meetings of the last, the last one that happened to be this morning. And I'll just give you a brief update of where we stand. We've had uh, three organizations uh, to come in and present to us, and we're gonna call them back after we have tried to decide on the areas that we we want them to focus on and give us their best shot in those particular areas because these plans are, are quite complicated. And I'll give you the three. GMA is the one that uh, we presently uh, have our plan with and we've been doing business with them since 1972. Uh, the second one is uh, Edward Jones Financial who represent, uh, represents principal principal would be the primary uh, carrier for uh, the retirement plan. And then there's another independent uh, organization, uh, WRS. And I think that's the only thing I've got, got as far as their name. So all three of them have been in to see us. Uh, we today kind of uh, have finalized on some of the areas we want them to bring back their proposals each have given us some proposals, but not near enough to uh, make any type of uh, decisions which way we'll go. One of the parts of it is we want to, as I mentioned earlier, is, and Mr. Cummings, if you would, please correct me, because uh, he's good at that stuff. Right? But um, we want to freeze the present program for the people who are presently employed, and nothing with their plan, nothing understand the word nothing will change. Uh, you have a moment there to let that sink in because uh, that's important when it, we start talking about retirement for uh, employees and, and sometimes conversation gets going and wrong things are said or assumed and we just don't want that to happen. They are on a defined benefit program presently which is a very good program. Uh, one of the areas where we have an opportunity to save, as we mentioned earlier, is to drop the council. And the council, or the elected officials, approximately at $65,000 a year in premium. And the reason that is so high, people say, I just don't understand how that can be so high, is that every one of us, when we step off the council, we immediately, because of our age, will start collecting benefits. That's the reason the premium is so high. If it was another 10, 15, 20 years before we collected our benefits, it wouldn't be a big issue. But because of our age, and again, this is a reason why you want to bring in younger people. If you're having a re our program, uh, pays immediately when you step off. Anybody 65 or older could start collecting. One of the areas we investigated heavily is a special program just for public safety, safety being fire and police. Uh, I felt very strong that we needed to do that because those are, those are light issues. And that's where we wanted to have uh, those employees healthy, fit, and able to carry out the jobs just like a 30 year old uh, man next to him because when they go into a fire or 
into a police action, they have to be physically fit to do their jobs. Otherwise, we stand to lose a citizen or we stand to lose another fireman or another policeman. So those are life issues, very expensive. We can't do it. So we, we are going to try, and this is where Mr. Mayor and I hope, if, if we are going to do away with the council's years, additional health and requirements, which would mean exercise and healthy living for our public safety. We don't need, uh, and I'm sorry if this comes out incorrectly, but we've got to have police and firemen that are physically able to do the jobs. And when, and I'm 70, so when you get up in age, you just can't do what you used to be able to do. So, Mr. Mayor, I'm hoping that we can take that $65,000 and apply that to towards a health program for all uh, Canton employees, not just the uh, public safety. Uh, we have rel a relatively rich program. Council members, you have in your uh, handouts or booklets, and you can see in, in section four, I believe it is, in the back, and it's you'll see the blue pages, and it's a study from GMA showing the various comparisons of the city programs. And I said earlier today that uh, tonight that I wasn't too keen on comparing, but here I am. But our multiplier, which is a key factor in what we pay, is 2.5, and they range for each city. <laughs> Bear with me one second. They range, here we go, as low as 1.25, and it goes up to high is, the highest is 2.5. There are only three cities in the state of Georgia that have 2.5 as a multiplier. We're one of them. That is an opportunity for us to save. So we're going to ask GMA and the others to address that issue so that our premiums will be reduced. We're also going to look for new employees, a defined contribution plan where they participate in their retirement plans. And I think most everybody here are familiar that you got to, you can't depend on a social security and a defined benefit plan only anymore. You're gonna to have to do some of your own savings. But the younger people who will be joining the city will probably have the opportunity to work with a uh, defined contribution plan to where the city will match what they put into it. We will match a certain, up to a certain percentage. Those numbers, we don't know what they are yet. But that's what we will ask the three potential uh, vendors to supply to us. I think uh, there is, in our council, I am gonna ask, or I'll let you know that to, to do these studies, the actuaries, it's, it's rather involved and it takes them anywhere from three to four weeks to do an actuarial study based on what we give them. And we have to give them all the census of our employees, their age, how much they make, da -da -da -da, how many, everything. And they take all that and they put it into the computers and they come back with some numbers for us. To do that study, GMA wants $1,700. And I'm gonna ask that the city give us a nod on the $1,700 to see where we are. But we couldn't spend the money until we had narrowed down what we think we need. And I, I, I have a question. Uh, the, uh, I'm not, I, I think I understand what you're saying about GMA making the study, but uh, we'll actually have two questions. Uh, if, if GMA makes the study, is it a study that's sort of biased in favor of GMA as opposed to the other two people you mentioned? Um, I don't know that answer. And the, and the other question is, 
we've been talking about pensions for well, a couple of years now, and about a year ago or so, we had another company come in and give us this presentation. Uh, I didn't hear that company in the three that the committee had uh, talked to. Is it because that company opted out or we chose not to go with them? It was their choice. Okay. I had to go and visit with the representative of that company and they opted out. Okay, that, that's what I want to know. And in the study, $1,700 isn't a lot of money, but if, if I'm asking somebody to give me a study to tell them why I should, tell me why I should do business with them, I kind of want well, to- Well, I, I failed to, to mention something. And you bring up a good question, Mr. Rush, and I'll try to answer the best I can. Um, because GMA is who we've been doing business with, uh, they have a, a, an awful lot of information that, that will be very beneficial to us. Uh, the others surely can do the same if they choose to do so. One area that we must pay close attention do a defined contribution it becomes even more complicated and of course with complicated more complicated programs usually the costs go up and that would be true here but there are some benefits with that some potential ben benefits uh, we as the city of Kent have only about four people who can even get involved to the a little bit our HR person director would do most of the work. We cannot add people to administrate uh, this program. If they do, cannot administrate it totally, do what most people would call a turnkey, that will probably be a very big negative for their proposal. We cannot take that on. And one of them would require us to be take full fiduciary responsibilities, which would be one heck of a lot of work for us and a lot of responsibilities and i'm not sure we want to do that so, but if they if the others want to do that study we will supply them all the information anything they ask we will give to them that question if the party that is going to require us to do all that is that part of the three that you named yes then why are we even entertaining that one uh, we uh, entertain, I'm not sure I understand John. You said there's three that you're looking at. Yes. Then you said that one of them is going to require us to do a lot of the, a fiduciary. Yes. Therefore, why would we even entertain talking about that one? They probably, uh, I gave you two reasons. One, they probably can do a better job on a defined contribution plan. Probably, I can't say that for an absolute. The other reason is that when you do a defined contribution and you got an employee putting their own dollars into a program with the city doing some match, that individual will have the responsibility to determine how he wants to, how he or she wants to place that money in different programs. Uh, the one that's you're referring to, Ms. Beresford, has a better network of financial advisors that can work with the individual employee, not only on uh, what the city has to offer, but in addition to that, any other things that they might have as far as retirement, basic insurance, just basic financial. And with that, Mr. Alpine, if I just wanted to add, one of the things that you didn't bring out is that the defined benefit plan that we have for existing employees could be separated if we decided to go with the defined contribution plan for new employees and they could be by separate separate vendors entirely it doesn't have to be all in one vendor to handle both of those so the second vendor where we would require more or would require more on our part could be just for the new employees or as we could keep the defined benefit, which requires less with GMA, or go to that same vendor. They don't have to be combined. Mr. Mayor, Excellent. I would ask that you do some serious looking at the 
party party the party that you just said is going to cost us to have additional work we'll not see anything more that one also is probably a little bit more expensive for us to do business with too so getting getting close it will take just for fyi it will probably take three or four weeks before we can get the study back. So it's not something that's moving lickety split. Let me just push it one little step further. Please don't waste council's time with that. Okay. Anyone else? Thanks. You have anything else? Sir? Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. All right. Under um, Under new business, discussion of amendment to Charter Section 2 2.35F, Councilman Bride. Mr. Mayor, we once in the last four years have uh, requested to take the podium to make a presentation, and this is the second time. I would respectfully ask if the council will allow me to stand up there and make my presentation. Any objections? Only if rebuttals are on. Everybody hear me okay? Okay. This really should have come under old business because this is a subject the council has been discussing for about three years now. If you'll indulge me, I want to take about 15 seconds to start off with a poem that a friend of mine sent me the other day, and then I'll get into the business of my motion. The election is over. The talking is done. My party lost, your party won. So let us be friends, let arguments pass. I'll hug my elephant, you kiss your ass. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, during my almost four years on the council, your initiative to replace the city attorney who had served us for many years. I supported your appointment as interim city manager while we search for a new one. I supported you in your choice for our current city manager. You and I have had breakfast with Sam Olins in our joint efforts to sell the reservoir. You and I have together met with Dr. Petrozillo in our joint efforts to retain the county's largest employer, which currently is still located in downtown Canton, but we are in imminent danger of losing. You and me have sit bourbon together while discussing so many issues facing us. I supported you when you reversed your position on selling the reservoir, I reversed mine too, because you were right. I supported your position of not approving the SCADA system until you changed your position on that, and then I too changed mine to match yours. You and I together met with Governor Roy Barnes to brainstorm ways to restructure and reduce our debt, which we have successfully done. More than a year ago, I was the first member of council to support your excellent idea of a fire referendum, and I still do support that. There's so much more we have done together. Working together, we have accomplished some great things for our wonderful city. I don't hate you. I don't have some sort of personal vendetta against you. In fact, as you know, within the past two weeks, I've twice stopped by your office to reaffirm to you face to face that this money saving proposal is nothing personal, <coughs> nothing personal. And you and I agreed that we would keep personalities out of it. 
I've offered to show you every shred of documentation supporting my position on this issue, and I have timed it to protect Mrs. Fowler's retirement benefits. Tonight is only the first step in the deliberative process to make this money-saving charter change that we have been discussing off and on for three years. Therefore, my motion is that we adopt the ordinance to amend the charter to delete section 2.35, paragraph F only. Delete paragraph F only. Okay, we have a motion. Uh, my first thought is that that should go before a work session before uh, it's actually voted on in this meeting. I don't know what the rest of you think on that. It should, I would think, go before a work session before we actually have full uh, discussion before we cast a vote on this. I'll make the motion. Second. Motion in a second. All right, so we're going to, I guess, sort of bypass our standard policy of, of going to the work session on these issues like this first. Um, any other discussion? Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Yes, sir. Do you know the charter that we changed this year took 15 citizens better than 18 months? took a committee internally to make the changes. It was a highly deliberative process. And it should not be changed just because a council member or members disagree with a mayor on whose decisions they are dissatisfied with. The adoption of the current version The adoption of the current version contains compromises made in order to obtain Council Member Bryan's agreement with its adoption, specifically the paragraph that he's asking now to remove. When the Council voted on the Charter earlier this year, I wanted a document that would be acceptable to all, not just one that had sufficient votes to pass, and it did so pass without any dissent. That is true. It was a 5 0 vote. You were absent. Mayor, I would like to apologize to you. You warned me when I started the process of charter modification that I should be very careful. But I was naive in believing that the compromising agreements made with Council Member Bryan would be adhered to. I'm very disappointed that Mr. Bryan places such little value on his word and his integrity to me that he would break his agreement with me just to give back to you, Mr. Mayor. It's not about money. Just three months ago, all members of this body voted to fund the mayor's office unanimously. It's just being vindictive, and you all know it. This is not the only, this is not the only agreement he has made and not honoring, but he is breaking his word to the mayor. A member, and I'm not basing this on what you told me or what you confirmed, a member of the press corps asked me why Mr. Bryan had this item on the agenda after he had expressed to this same press member that he would not bring to the council the discussion of the mayor's staff as long as the mayor ceased discussion of consolidation of the fire department with Cherokee County. Mr. Mayor, you confirmed the existence of such agreement. I am requesting that Mr. Bryan withdraw this request and honor his word given. That, that agreement was with me. Was with Mr. Bryan, excuse me, sir. It was with Mr. Bryan at his house over tea. Mr. Mayor, did you and I not have that discussion? We did, and also I, I met with Mr. Bryan after, but after I met with you. Yeah. Uh, any other? We have we have a motion on the table. We have a second. Any other discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes. 
here's another classic example of how come this council has by the citizens input to us referring to it as backbiting I can't get along taking shots and all of this now what's interesting is Mr. Bryant had brought up prior to this meeting in a discussion openly and then we turned around and we had a beautiful litany of issues brought forward as if whoops a surprise detail down so this is the type of stuff that we're going through it's a shame I hate to be a part of it but it's the reality of how this is I will say additional point this was created not this issue right here but it's a combination of all these issues we had a council vote five to one to stop the negotiation of consolidation and get on with the fire district five to one it didn't turn out the way some wanted it five to one therefore we had to go back and have issues going it's created additional issues this point is not a shot at what you're all trying to relate it to I'm ashamed that it's gone this far and there is no way that this council is going to be able to continue to work when we have the undermining that's going on we have emails that come out here we go again we are going to have to uh, try to get around the, uh, the exemption of the senior citizens we've moved on Bob we've moved down the road on that we're in It's been seconded. Let's call for a vote. I have. Uh, anyone else have any uh, comments on that? Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to make one brief statement. Yes, sir. I have nothing but the greatest respect for Mr. Cummins. I appreciate your sincere efforts. I don't appreciate the personal attacks, but I do forgive you for them. No. I'm sorry for no. your personal no. 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 but I, I have nothing but respect and admiration for you, sir, and I do forgive you for anything that you might have said against me. Mr. Mr. Rush? Uh, only one comment, Mr. Mayor, and, and, and this is to the, to the motion, and I have been saying for the three years that I've been on council that I think it's bad management policy for a part-time person to have full-time staff without regard to personalities. I, I just, I've said that for three years and I, I continue to say it. Yeah, well, I'd like to have a, obviously I do disagree vehemently with, with this uh, effort here, certainly. Uh, and I, and, and to, to classify this or to call this a money-saving measure is just simply not true. I mean, we have had a uh, council member promise that that money would go to economic development, the DDA or Main Street or something. And that's, if, you, if you're taking it away from one and spending it somewhere else, it's, I, I don't see the taxpayers uh, realizing any savings at all. But you know, this whole deal is the role of mayor, I think, has, has recently been questioned. Uh, the voters and the citizens of, of this city put me in this office to help them and to really oversee, I feel, the daily activities and operations of our city simply as an extra set of eyes and as chief executive officer of this city. I listen to citizens and businesses of Ken and assist them with their issues and problems as much as I can. I have daily contact with citizens and businesses of this city, either by phone, direct in-person contact, or when I'm speaking to civic groups, homeowners, associations, businesses, and among many others. Unlike many of those in city government, I have lived here my whole life, so far. And I have held public office in a variety of capacities. Whether, it's, whether it is in the charter or not, I am somewhat known to the voters and businesses of Canada as the point person for city matters. And I guess that's true of many mayors. I'm on duty 24-7, 365 to listen and try to resolve citizens' issues. 
here's just a sampling of the requests and questions I get as mayor, either at the office, at home, or somewhere in between. I get questions concerning everything from water bills, zoning, garbage, sewer leaks, street problems, street lights, storm water, littered along city streets in the interstate, business licenses, the reservoir, the smell from the sewer plant. Why is my water off? My power is off and Georgia Power is nowhere in sight. I guess I could go for Comcast tonight. I think we have Please slow down those speeders on East Main. Please slow down those speeders on Riverstone. Please slow down those speeders on Marietta Highway below the high school. Why can't we have a red light at Bowling Park? Why didn't waste management pick up my garbage today? My sprinkler system can't possibly use that much water, can it? Would you check my meter? Why don't we have a steak and shake here? Why is construction taking so long downtown? Why, what's going on at the police department? Where do I pay my speeding ticket? Why don't you straighten out the wa that water department? Why does the Y charge so much? Who's in charge of parades, first Friday, taste of candy events downtown? Can I use the theater for a wedding? When are you going to fill that hole up where the drugstore burned? Can I play golf for free at the city's golf course? What do I have to do to speak at a council meeting? Why don't that person or department return my call? Why do I have to pay a sewer bill when I'm on septic tank? Can my church use the city's stage for a special event? These are just a sampling of the types of questions or issues that the mayor gets daily, but I couldn't answer all those by myself. I have an administrative assistant with more experience in local government than almost anyone else at City Hall. She takes care of many of the calls to the mayor's office. She assists me by bird dogging and problem solving for residents and businesses. I also have a staff member of the mayor's office, the Main Street Director, who takes most of her direction from the Main Street Board. Everyone can see the difference in downtown from just three short years ago. I'm proud of the employees that work for me in the city. My staff consists of Pat Fowler and Ginger Rard. Thank you for your help uh, and what you do for this city. I may be paid on a part-time basis, but I serve the people full-time. The mayor's office is full-time. You can call the mayor's office or you can call me personally. My, cell, my personal cell number is 770-402-9322. Most of you already have that. <laughs> Most of you have it. I am available. The voters put me in this office to help them, and that's just what I intend to do until they, the voters, and not this council, change their mind. Thank you. All right. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Okay. Most carries. Although I think it's inappropriate that we didn't follow a normal procedure going through a, uh, uh, I can't, can't do that. Do we, well, we have someone that would like to speak, well, this council would like someone from the uh, uh, audience to speak? No. Is that a no? Okay, who would, who, let's have a show of hands. We have a request to speak. Uh, uh, yes, those in favor, yes? No. Jack? Jack? Okay. No. Okay. You're an elected representative. Yeah. And you okay. don't want to hear from the citizens. The next, uh, next item, the acknowledgement of Northside Hospital Inc. as successor to Northside Hospital Inc. Uh, Cherokee Inc. Uh, basically, as I understand, Bobby, you may want to elaborate on that. Are you familiar with it? Yes. It's just a change of name, I think. Yes, it's just acknowledging that the, the new entity gets the rights under that development agreement. That North, it is a name check. So moved. I got a motion approved. Have, have a second. Those, those in the favor, city five, saying aye. Aye. Those no. All members voted for the motion. Okay, uh, Mr. Wood, uh, you can handle the trail grant application. Let me just read it so you know <coughs> what you're being asked to vote on. You're being asked to approve this resolution. 
Whereas at the regular meeting of the Mayor and City Council of Canton, Georgia, held on November 15, 2012, a motion was made, duly seconded, and approved that the City of Canton agreed to submit a pre-application for funding from the Recreational Trails Program. The City of Canton further agrees that in the event the City of Canton's pre-application is recommended for funding by the Department of Natural Resources, the City of Canton certifies and assures that it has the ability and intention to finance their 20% of the total project cost and will move forward with due diligence to prepare or have prepared appropriate documentation required for a formal Georgia Recreational Trail Program application. Two questions you may have would be the amount we could qualify for. I understand the maximum is 100000 so the maximum that the city would be required to, to, uh, to match, as a match, would be 20% of that or $20,000. And uh, we already have the appropriate documents, documentation prepared. Question. Did, did you say where the trails are? Motion Yes, sir. I've got several items real quick. Uh, earlier this week, we incurred a major breakdown on the pumping equipment at the Harmon Field lift station. <laughs> We're currently using rented pumps to keep that station in operation, but it is an expensive and temporary arrangement. That particular lift station is now over 47 years old, almost a half century of continual use. You combine that with population increases and different types of service demand, so a modernization of that station is probably overdue anyway. But we're looking at ways to keep the station uh, adequately in operation until a plan for permanent corrections can be implemented, but we do expect that to be an expensive fix. We'll be coming back to you. We'll keep you posted on it. We'll come back to you with a specific plan of action and, and uh, budget requirements on that as quickly as possible. Secondly, you will remember that early this year, back during the winter of this year, we held a joint meeting between the City Council and the Cobb Marietta Water and Sewer Authority in order to provide you an update on the construction of the reservoir. We had it out at the Bluffs Parkway, and I think everybody here was in attendance. Significant changes have occurred or are occurring at the reservoir since that meeting, and we are now entering the necessary transition from primarily a construction orientation to more of an operating focus. Consequently, I have asked that another joint meeting be held in January. And that meeting uh, has been tentatively scheduled for lunchtime here at City Hall on Wednesday, January the 9th. We will send the meeting details to you within the next couple of weeks, but I do encourage you to keep that meeting in mind and attend it if at all possible. I think you'll find it to be interesting. We are expecting uh, the majority of the Cobb Marietta Water Authority members to attend. On Tuesday of this week, we met with a representative of the State Department of Transportation to discuss the status of the widening of Highway 20 from I-575 to Scott Road. That project is currently scheduled for right-of-way acquisition to take place in fiscal year 2014 with construction scheduled for fiscal year 2016. You should expect the public hearings on the project to begin being held in March of next year. Not only Mayor and Council, but the public at large. and sidewalk on the Canton Marketplace side. So again, we want to encourage you to be considerate of the public hearings once those dates are established and publicized and encourage you to attend and participate. Our ISO consultant is in town. Uh, he is working actively with our fire department leadership to prepare us as fully as possible for our pending ISO evaluation, which may come as early as next month. Additionally, we are working to secure the necessary information for uh, timely inclusion in the bond referendum program. And I believe that uh, resolution will be on the uh, agenda for uh, the meetings in December. Finally, yesterday I held a planning meeting with our public safety and public works department heads to ensure that we are well prepared for any weather related phenomena which might develop this coming week. merchant had to deal with too many snowstorms in Altamont Springs. But I simply wanted to make certain that everyone is aware of our respective responsibilities and resources and that we appropriately coordinate those resources. 
Uh, obviously, we're not eager for a major storm, but I think we will be as ready as, as possible should one or more visit us this winter. Do want to encourage, and we may uh, make this announcement uh, later. Uh, the last major winter storm we had, we had a huge problem with people abandoning vehicles and blocking roadways uh, when they abandoned those vehicles. <coughs> We've got to keep roadways clear. Uh, we cannot uh, introduce road clearing equipment if the roads uh, have got cars stopped in the middle of them or on the side so that we can't get those road clearing vehicles through. City bought snow plow. We've got uh, sand uh, d distribution equipment. And also, obviously, public safety vehicles have to get through on those roads. Uh, people can't have house fires even during snowstorms. People have, can have heart attacks during snowstorms. Ambulances need to get through. So we will be, as necessary, uh, should we have that type of event occur, again, we will be necessarily uh, towing automobiles uh, to be able to provide uh, clearance for uh, public safety and for public work vehicles on, the, on, the, on city streets. Okay, thank you. Uh, anything else there? Okay, uh, the mayor's report. I just, I would just like to say a couple of things here. First of all, I'd like to say that I would like to thank that charter study committee for all their almost two years of work, which has obviously been uh, rejected by a number of council members here tonight. I mean, uh, your time to them meant nothing, apparently, that I can tell. Uh, also, I would like to say that uh, I think we will we will move move forward in the next uh, short period of time to have much more discussion on this issue and I think we will reveal the real reason for this. It's obvious it's not a budgetary reason because the money's been promised somewhere else already. So there'll be some, we'll talk about the, the actual uh, reasons for the uh, move here and, and why it's actually being done. And it's also interesting too to note that the uh, the issue, the charter amendment to remove the mayor's ability to make council appointments was removed from the uh, charter now simply because it didn't want it to look like it was piling on, so to speak, at one time. So and anyway, there's there's a lot, a lot of issues and discussion to be had about this before uh, the final decision, and I, I think it's going to get very, very interesting, and it's going to, uh, it's not going to make this city look very good, I think, in the end. I, I hate to say that, but that's it. Okay, the next item, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss personnel and litigation. Have a motion? Motion. Second. Okay, those in favor? Aye.